Hi there, welcome to this new build series and this is one I'm really excited about. If you've watched my channel for any period of time you'll know that there's two things that I'm quite keen on and that's flying wings and old vintage classic designs. Well, just to give you a little bit of background on how I decided to build this, which we'll get to in a minute what it is. I was at a swap meet walking around and I saw this old vintage, or classic sorry, flying wing on the ground, no engine, looking a little bit sorry for itself at a really good price. And I was really tempted to buy it and to get it flying because it just looked really good. In fact, here's a picture of it now. And you can see those lovely swept uh, leading edges on that wing. And as I say, it's a classic design. But I like building and I like building my own planes. I'm, I'm not a great one for buying second-hand planes. And I kind of resisted buying this. It was only 15 quid, which is really cheap. And it's, somebody bought it anyway. And I had a chat and found out what it was. And it was a ION, which is spelled I-O-N. And it was produced by Performance Kits in the 1950s. And you can see here, this is the very first advert that I've been able to find for the ION. And this is from 1957. I think it's June 1957, uh, model, uh, model aeroplane magazine. And I think later that year, another advert came out. And you can see that here. And you can actually see the design on this one and the shape of it. And I just think that's a fantastic looking shape. And, you know, I've been wanting to build a flying wing with a diesel engine for a long time. So that's going to happen now. I'm going to build this ION. It's got a just under 34 inch wingspan and I'm going to put a diesel engine in it. The original ION was free flight and I'm going to build this kind of radio assist. I'm not sure it's going to have elevons and it has got elevons on the back which for the free flight were just for the trim. But I'm going to put micro servos on those and I may even put in a micro servo and have a throttled engine. I'm not totally sure what engine I'm going to be using. The plans, which we'll have a closer look at in just a second, they show a Frog 80 in situ here, which they say is ideal for this. I'm in two minds whether to put get an old Frog 80, which is 1950s engine, or whether to get a new PAW engine with a throttle on it. I, I'm kind of tempted to go for the PAW because they're great engines, lovely starters, and um, I know it will run really nice, but we'll see. I'm going to make a couple of small modifications, these very minor modifications, but we'll have a quick look at the plans and I'll just run you through it and the change that I'm going to make. Now these are a really good set of plans. They haven't got all the information that we need, but they are pretty good. And I don't think they were ever standalone plans. They were provided in the, the kits, the ION kit, that was produced by Performance Kits. Now Performance Kits was run and managed by quite a colourful chap called Peter Fisher. And this was, I think the company was run from the mid 50s through to the end of the 70s, maybe even the early 80s. I, I'm, I'm not really sure. But apparently he would turn up at his local airfield in his suit, driving a Maserati and, and smoking a pipe. Like I say, quite a colourful character. Now, when I decided to build this, I had quite a bit of difficulty at first finding a set of plans. I posted online and got a, a couple of bits of, of plans and, and people sent me pictures of plans that they'd got. But it wasn't really what I wanted, the detail I needed to build this ION. And in the end, I found a website run by a, a chap called Derek Scott, who not only had the plans for the ION, he had the instruction sheet that went in the kit, which is really interesting because it has some of the background development of the ION and it's really interesting to read. But he also had some um, templates, a sheet 
that was uh, all the rib templates and everything you needed, more or less. And we'll have a look at those in just a second. And uh, I need to just point out a couple of things with those. But these are pretty good. And as I said, I'm thinking of perhaps not having the Frog 80, but going for a throttled PAW, an English made PAW 55, which I think would be nice because it would be a good running engine. And if I can sort the weight out okay to have a, a, a micro servo for the throttle. Now, the other thing that I'm going to change, different to what's shown on the plans, is in relation to the wheels. Now, this plan shows there's a nose wheel here and there's a kind of a sh uh, shows how to bend them up out of wire and I think I'm going to still have that because it will protect the engine coming into land uh, it will protect the prop and so I think it's a good idea there's also a shape here for some wheel carriers for the uh, wing tips on both wing now in the instructions it says that this wing will take off really well off a hard surface. Well I fly for grass field, it's a really nice grass field, but it's not good enough that these wheels will make any difference. I think it, it just, I don't think it will roll on the grass. So I'm going to do away with those and that will be quite a useful weight saving because I can use um, that kind of weight balance, if you like, to put in the micro servos here for these elevons. Now the elevons that are shown in the plan, and you'll have seen them in the, the photograph earlier, uh, they're just for trim, but I think there's no reason why we can't attach a servo to them and use them just like we would on a flying wing. The only thing is they're quite big and it could end up being quite twitchy, so I need to be really careful how I do the trim on that. The, uh, there's a skid, a fin, and a skid here that is shown that goes against the terminal rib. So that'll provide quite a nice landing skid, and that's out of 116 ply, so it should be strong enough. And I'll probably just put a little bit of reinforcement in the end of the wing just to cope with that pressure they get but it's a very small flying wing what did I say just under 34 inches so it should be absolutely fine there's a bit of a diagrammatic here an isometric view just showing how it goes together I think this should be a fairly <laughs> quick and easy build having said that we've got this really nice swept wing which I'm really looking forward to pulling together so We'll see how it goes, but we'll, we'll video it all and um, I'm really looking forward to getting on and building it. So now, I think we'll take a look at what, the, uh, at what we've got with the rib templates. Now, with any plan build, I always say, don't trust the plans, measure, check, measure again. And this build is no different. Now, you get these rib templates that come with the plan and there are there's another piece here somewhere with some cross forms here we go and there's this one here with the cross formers which really you can measure off the plans it's got the fin and it's really you know they're really detailed they look good but I have measured all of the ribs on the actual plan and compared them to this and I found a couple of discrepancies there are some R3 and R4s here on, uh, on this piece, which are the wrong size. There's another R4 and R3 here, which are the correct size. So for example, I think this comes out about three, oh no, what is it? Uh, so that's just under 280 mil for that R4. And this one comes in at, um, 290 so there's a slight discrepancy there so we need to check that and there's a line through this because these are not right but those are right in relation to the length on the plan these are all okay and these are all okay as well now the real problem came to when we looked at the root rib and R8 
and essentially these are my measurements for the, the size of the ribs off the plans but essentially these aren't long enough they're slightly too short and what you have to do is you have to print them at 113 percent so there we've got the the ribs there and if you rather than printing them at 100 percent which will give you this which is not right as i said we need to print print them at 113 percent and then they are just right you can see i've done some calculations here to uh, to get them right so now hopefully we've got all the templates I, i'm kind of expecting some fine tuning once i've cut all these out i'm expecting to set them up on the wing and see that there is maybe the odd one that needs a little bit of uh, adjustment but we'll we'll see to that we'll see about that when we come to it uh, and we'll go through the uh, the process of correcting it if necessary now all of these ribs are on 116 sheet and it does say somewhere i don't know whether i said this but these all these um rib templates just come as one big uh pdf and uh, or, or plan should i say and you have to uh, you have to adjust them yourself but anyway uh, what i'm going to do now is i've got some scotch blue magic tape and i've got my 116 balsa and i'm going to put this I'm, I'm using the lightest 116 balsa i've got so uh, and i'm going to put the scotch blue onto the uh, balsa I'm then going to cut out the rib templates and I'm going to stick them onto the scotch blue. I can then cut out the rib and then peel off the, uh, the template because this scotch blue masking tape, if I show you that, just see what it is hopefully, that peels off the balsa really nicely so it'll just leave us with a nice clean rib. I'm only going to do ribs for the one side and then I can use the ribs that I produced just as a pattern to cut around. There's no point in me sticking the templates onto uh, the balsa twice, you know, two R2s, two R3s. I might as well just do the one and then carefully cut around. Right, well, I'm going to start sticking the tape on now and get these paper templates cut out, stuck down onto the tape, and once that's done, we'll have a quick look at it before I start cutting out the ribs. Can't wait to get on with this. Right, I've now got the 116 soft balsa covered in, uh, in this scotch blue tape and I've stuffed, stuck down enough of the rib template to do the one wing and I've stuck them down with two different types of glue. In the past I've used PVA which has kind of uh, softened the ribs and wrinkled them up and you know you have to be really careful how you put them on and then they take forever to dry or at least till the next day. So I, I tried this um, this rubber cement and because um, that's no wrinkle it doesn't bleed through it dries quickly but it, it didn't seem to stick particularly well. I, I, it might not be too bad now but I didn't like the way I had to keep pressing it down. So after these two ribs I switched to using a glue stick and that's stuck this down really well so i'm going to leave it an hour and then i'm going to start to cut these out and um and hopefully that'll be fine and we'll get them nicely cleaned up well i've got all of the ribs cut out now out of the balsa so these are the balsa with the um the tape on and then the uh the ribs stuck onto that now i think these templates that we're using will have originally been hand drawn and then they've been printed onto the the balsa and then somebody scanned that balsa to give us these and you can see i say they've been hand drawn because you can see here between this spar and the end i don't know where that shows up but there's a little bit of a dip there well i've straightened that out because i'm fairly sure that shouldn't dip so I've, I've had a little bit of artistic license in just trying to smooth these ribs out a little bit but I've tried to be generous as well because I think when we come to put this together and sand it it may be that it, 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 they're not 100% accurate and we'll have to do a little bit of sanding. 
but we'll see and you know it's great to have these templates because it would be a, a lot more work to try and build this wing if we hadn't got the templates so and, and just a quick demonstration just to show how this um, how this tape comes off it just peels off the balsa once we've uh, once we've got it to the right shape well when I set out to make these ribs I was thinking I would make um, make them in pairs so I've got enough for the left wing as well as the right wing but I think it's prudent to make sure that these are right first because it wouldn't surprise me if I have to make another rib perhaps to replace one that's not quite right so I'm going to get this all set out so it's ready to glue you know so it's it, it, it looks right and it fits and everything and then I'll take it apart and I'll use these ribs as a template and then we can get it back together and, and glued. I just think it's more prudent to make we've make sure we've got these right rather than wasting balsa. Now the setting out of the wing is going to be the next video. I'm going to draw this video to a close now. You know, we've had a look at the plans and hopefully you can see why I'm excited about this lovely 1950s kind of futuristic design of a flying wing with this lovely swept leading edge. I mean, I, I just think it's a lovely shape. So we've seen that and we've got the ribs ready. So in the next video, we're all ready to get one of these wings finished. And I hope you'll enjoy, uh, I hope you'll come back and join me in, uh, in building that wing. And I hope you found this useful and interesting. So thanks very much for watching.